Hi, I'm Pastor Kerry. You want to know a phrase that I am not a fan of? I am not a fan of the phrase, I'm only asking questions. <laughs> I am not a fan of that phrase because I feel like a lot of times people will say something provocative, something that really gets other people upset. And then when other people do get provoked by whatever they've just said, the person will try to justify it by saying, hey, I'm only asking questions. As if that is going to let them off the hook for whatever provocative, upsetting thing that they've just said. And it's interesting because I just a week or so ago uh, saw this list online of how to know if you're a jerk. <laughs> Actually, the list used a little bit stronger language than that. Uh, but I was curious to know whether or not I am a jerk <laughs> or as the, uh, as the list said, uh, something a little stronger than that. And the list basically had a, a, a kind of a listing of phrases that people who are jerks that they say. In fact, one of them was, hey, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> and the point that this list made was that if you really are a nice guy, then you don't have to go around telling people, hey, I'm a nice guy, because they'll already know it. But as I went down that list, as I started getting towards the end, another phrase that they had on that list was, I'm only asking questions. And I thought, all right, <laughs> this, is a, this is a reliable list. You are preaching to the choir. I agree wholeheartedly. I kind of feel like people who are jerks <laughs> are the ones who are always saying, I'm only asking questions. So now you know how I feel about that phrase. But having said that, <laughs> I am going to be asking you some questions today in response to the lectionary passage. Today, the lectionary passage we're going to be looking at is the lectionary passage for November the 7th, 2021. We're going to be taking a look at the gospel reading. And I want to tell you right up front that this is an incredibly challenging passage. And so after we finish looking at this incredibly challenging passage, I am not going to say, so in response to this passage, you need to do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this. Instead today, in response to this incredibly challenging passage, I'm just going to ask you some questions. If you haven't already, you can print off the sermon notes. If you go right down below the video, there should be a link that can help you print off the sermon notes. Once you do that, Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 44, and this is a slightly abridged version of this passage. One of the teachers of the law came and asked Jesus, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and that there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that the teacher of the law had answered wisely, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than, into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything all she had to live on. May God bless the reading of the challenging word today. So friends, 
This is a passage that I want you to understand took place during the Passion Week. At this point in Jesus' ministry in the book of Mark, he had traveled to Jerusalem for that final Passover. And as you know about the Passion Week, Jesus had a lot of individuals that were going to get upset with him. At the same time, he was on a lot of people's radar even as Jesus arrived in Jerusalem for the Passion Week. There were already people that were looking to get Jesus in trouble as soon as he showed up. And so you might think that these, uh, these scriptures that we just looked at, these verses that we just looked at, that this might be a case where this particular teacher of the law was one of those that was trying to get Jesus in trouble. But as you read the passage, it seems like this teacher of the law was an exception. That this teacher of the law, when he went to Jesus with this question, that he wasn't trying to get Jesus to say something that was going to get him in trouble, this wasn't a gotcha question, at least not as far as this teacher of the law was concerned. And so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, a little bit closer look at what happens in this passage. And then, after we take just a little bit closer look at what happens in this passage, then I'm going to ask you some questions. So, the teacher of the law comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, which commandment is the most important one? And again, we know that there have been plenty of times in the Gospels when other people have tried to trip Jesus up, tried to get Jesus to say something that's going to get him in trouble. Jesus' response here is to quote the Shema, which just happens to be the passage that we looked at last week. So if you looked at the passage with us last week, the sermon last week, then you know this passage quite well. It's Deuteronomy 6.4, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But then Jesus adds to that, and Jesus says, I realize you didn't ask, but I'll even tell you the second greatest commandment after that, and the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And at this point, rather than going, aha, you just said something wrong, Jesus, you're in big trouble now, this particular teacher of the law says, you're right. You're absolutely right. To love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself, that's better than all burnt offerings. And so this teacher of the law seems to be making a callback at this point to Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, where Micah says, What shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So, so Jesus has this really interesting encounter with this teacher of the law. And so it might be safe to say, oh, and I'm sorry, I almost forgot something. And so at the end of this, Jesus says something pretty remarkable to this teacher of the law. He says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Then in this passage, we actually skip forward a few verses from 34 to 38. And then what's funny is as, as we skip forward those four verses, the next thing Jesus says is, watch out for the teachers of the law. So <laughs> apparently he's referring to the other teachers of the law, not this teacher of the law. And he has some very critical thing to say about those religious leaders. And then when we get to the end of the passage, there's this famous story where Jesus is watching everybody coming in and putting their offerings into the temple treasury. Now keep in mind, again, this is the Passover week. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of Hebrew pilgrims that are coming from all over the known world to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem this week. And they are going and they are loading up the temple treasury. And Jesus is just sitting back observing it. And then he sees this woman come and just put in two small copper coins and he says about her, she's the one who gave the most. She gave everything that she had. Because that's how it is in this life. As you well know, there are some who give a little. There are some who give quite a bit. But there are some that give all. Which, of course, is the title of our sermon today. Some give all. And so... 
thinking along those lines that some give off. What I want to do now is I want to ask some questions based on this passage. And the first question that I want to ask based on this passage is this. What will it look like if I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? What will it look like if I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? My friend, I am assuming that you're watching this video because you are a Christ follower. And I am assuming that you're watching this sermon video uh, because you are hopefully wanting to grow a little bit deeper in your faith. And I certainly want to commend you on that. And I want you to just think about how you would answer that question. What would it look like for you to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And I want you to know that this is a question that I have wrestled with personally myself this week. What would it look like for me? A 51-year-old pastor of a little blue-collar church in, uh, in uh, an economically downturned neighborhood in Lincoln, Nebraska. What would it look like for me to love God with all of my heart and soul and mind and strength? I've wrestled with that question this week. And I know what I feel like I would say in response to that question, and ultimately that's kind of between me and God, but I hope that you will wrestle with this question as well. And I hope that you'll ask yourself, what would it look like for you? I know that you're watching this video because you do love God, or I'm certainly assuming that you're probably watching this video because you do love God. But I think if I'm being honest with myself, and maybe if you're being honest with yourself, Maybe there's a little more that I can do on my end. And so, I would encourage you to wrestle with that question. The second question that I would ask you today is this. What will it look like if I love my neighbor as much as I love myself? What will it look like if I love my neighbor as much as I love myself? And friends, I got to tell you, I love myself a lot. So for me to love my neighbor as much as I love myself... I'm going to love them a lot, too. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, look, you know that our calling is to extend God's love to the people in our lives, whether that are the members of our family, whether that are is our physical neighbors, wh whoever that may be, our co-workers. I mean, the list goes on. We need to love other people just as much as we love ourselves. We need to do unto others as we would want them to do unto us. Now, my guess is that there are some out there who might feel like this is kind of a challenging question for them because I know that there are people out there who struggle with their self-esteem. I guess another way of saying it is I know that there are some people out there who don't love themselves very much. And my friend, if you are one of those people, then what I would say to you is this. If loving your neighbor as much as you love yourself, knowing that you don't love yourself very much, means that you wouldn't love your neighbor very much, then I would encourage you to try to love your neighbor the way that you know God loves your neighbor. Because how do you know that God loves your neighbor? You know that God loves your neighbor unconditionally. You know that God loves your neighbor sacrificially. And so I would encourage you to try to love your neighbor unconditionally, sacrificially. And then, my friend, if you are able to get to the point where you can do that, then I would encourage you to try to love yourself the same way. I would, try to, I would encourage you to try to love yourself unconditionally the way that God loves you. So, that is the second question that I would ask based on this passage. The third question is this. What will it look like if I give all I have? What will it look like if I give all I have? And hey, I'm only asking questions. <laughs> but that is an incredibly challenging question, isn't it? Because in this passage, 
Jesus saw wealthy people coming and giving great amounts, but they were giving out of their abundance. He sees this poor woman give everything that she has, and it's only a few cents. And Jesus is commending her for her donation. And friends, first of all, I want you to know that when we talk about giving, we aren't just talking about financial giving. And I realize that there are many of you that very faithfully support your church, whether that is Southview Christian Church or those of you that are members of other churches. I know that there are many of you who support other ministries, and I want to commend you for that, and I want to thank you for that. Churches need your support. Ministries need your support. There are lots of good things that you can do with the resources that God has blessed you with. But I think you also know that we aren't just talking about our treasures, as it were. You've probably heard a pastor, maybe you've heard me talk about the three T's, that not only are there the treasures that we can give of, but there are also our talents of which we can give, and there's the time that we have. And I would encourage you simply to ask yourself if you're giving the way that you should be in all of those areas. Are you giving of your treasure? That's wonderful. Are you giving of your talent? That's fantastic. I know that here at Southview Christian Church, we have a ton of incredibly talented people that donate their talent. And by extension, they donate their time. (laughs) It takes a lot of time to be the church. I can't do it all, as you know. If you would go to another church, your pastor can't do it all. It takes all of us working together. It takes all of us to be the church. And so, like I said, today, I'm just asking questions. (laughs) I want you to think about whether or not you are loving God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want you to think about whether or not you're loving your neighbor the way that you should be. And I want you to think about if you are giving all that you can. Because some give a little, and some give a lot, but some give all. And in this passage, Jesus commended the one who gave all. And friends, one final thing before I close. There was a a little passage in here that maybe you feel like I glossed over. But I want you to know that... uh, that I didn't necessarily gloss over this passage either. In verses 38 through 40, Jesus had something really critical to say about the religious leaders of his day. And I want you to know that as I have asked myself these three questions this week that I asked you today, that I've also wrestled with that passage as well. And as the leader of this wonderful little church, Southview Christian Church, I've wrestled with whether or not I'm one that likes to get all the attention, uh, walking around and being shown respect and talking about the way that those religious leaders took advantage of the poor. I wrestled with that this week, and I want you to know that, that that's something that I feel like, hopefully... I'd like to think that I'm doing okay about that. I'd like to think that this church has done right by the people that are a part of the church. Uh, But I didn't just gloss over it. I took a close look at that too. Well, friends, that's where we're going to leave off today. Next week, our lectionary passage is going to be from the Psalms. So I hope that you'll come back and join us for that. Right now, I just want to close with a quick word of prayer. Let's pray. God, sometimes we need to be challenged, and sometimes we need to ask ourselves the tough questions. God, I pray that you would help all of us to do our very best to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves, and to give all that we can in service of you. God, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next week.